Right, this should be it. We're on the circumstantial participle. It does not have the article. Now remember, it can have the article, or it might not might not have the article. Here's here's two rules that you that go together. They're, they're actually just like one rule. But if the participle has the article, it's automatically used as a an adjective. So it's adjectival automatically with, if it has the article. If it doesn't have the article, it still might be adjectival. But it can't have the article and be adverbial. So here, it does not have the article. So I want you to notice that. Participle does not have the article. And it's constructed in agreement with the subject of the verb. So it's in agreement with the subject of the verb. It is an adjunct to the verb and various expresses various verbal ideas such as cause, condition, mode, so forth. This construction is so important. Full in illustration is given. All right, there's a conditional it's expressing a condition. Pose, a maze, a food, zomitha, te leek, ates, amel, santes, soterias. How shall we escape neglecting so great salvation? Hebrews 2 3. How shall we escape? Now, the we is emphatic. Escape. A mace is automatically emphatic because this verb has the verb here has its participle, has its uh, pronoun already attached to it at the end. Oh, method. Method. Right. And now here is your participle over here. Neglecting. So it's a condition. So in this case here, it's expressing a condition. How shall we escape if we neglect? And so that's usually how it's translated. Hebrews 2, 3. So it can have that. It, so it has wide uses, the participle does. So it's a circumstantial participle. <clears throat> it also can express purpose. So it, can, it may express purpose. All right. And so, Elay Luthe, Proskunason, Son, Ace, Ere, Salum, Salum, Bayam, Jerusalem. So, he had come to Jerusalem worshiping. So, he had come, as your participle, a verb rather. And what tense verb is that? Someone help me out there. That is a perfect tense. He had come. So, and so he had come where? To Jerusalem. Toward Jerusalem, to Jerusalem. And what's he doing when he's coming there? This case here, see it's an adverbial participle expressing the purpose. So it's giving you the purpose. He came to worship, Acts 8, 27. That's the Ethiopian eunuch, okay? All right, now, Kuiper on wheels, even though being a son, and there's a there's your participle being it's a being verb being participle so as a concession even though being a sign here's another one mode this is in the great commission i call it the apostolic commission i say to sante te ethne 
baptizantes, the Caio, the Ca, the Cas, Cas, the Casantes. I thought that was misspelled. Okay, I was trying to see if it was misspelled. And so this is from the Great Commission here, and it's baptize them, make disciples, and uh, of whom the the ethnic, the ethnic, the nations, the Gentiles. So you baptize. You, you uh, make disciples. Of, you disciple the the, the uh, nations, and then how do you do that? So this is your mode of doing by baptizing and teaching. Okay. All right. Any questions there? All right. And we have the time, and let's just get into this. Sometimes we can use infinitives to express time too. We've already seen that. So infinitives can express time as well. All right, sa sa say or omethes omenos as Macedonia. Okay, so here going. If your participle, I exhorted you, I exhorted you, and here's the case there, I exhorted you while going into Macedonia. And so as I was on my way, and I exhorted you. Any comments there? Uh, as I was going on my way, uh, going on my way into Macedonia, I exhorted you. So in the process of going, I, I exhorted you. And on my journey, this is, this verb from which this is from means to take a journey in, in a particular direction, okay? Okay. In contemporary time was the main verb. And an action prior to the action of the main verb. Edon Eroka. Edon Erota. Seeing he asked. Action prior to the main verb he saw and then he asked. I'm thinking. We don't have a verse that's in, and I need to probably get into it and find it, but I think that's in the Bible. He saw and asked is probably the best way to translate the Bible. Time may be also future, and we see that with the purpose illustration. So it takes future time. Right. So that's, you have a purpose. The students should remember that parcel does not ex time, express time in itself. Right. So it does not by itself express time. All right. So all by itself, it doesn't express time. But it picks its time up from the context. Paris participle does not necessarily mean past time. When I debated Mike Deaver, that was one of his points. He thought the Paris participle automatically expressed time, past time. And he just was dead wrong on it. And, and uh, there's a bunch of Greek grammarians that say it doesn't. So that's a mistake looking at the aorist as if it's past. The aorist looks at the action as, as a whole, right? but it has to pick up its time from the context. It may actually be simultaneous to some grammarians believe future according to, according to what we have here. 
Now I can go over into get out of this file and go over into the other file and see it, but uh, it uh, may be actually simultaneous. Okay, let me see here. Let me do this. I uh, I think I want to do that. I wanted to get out of it just a minute and. Let me see. I don't. I think I've got to get out of it. Can you see it, bar symbols? Yes, sir. These are some of the rules in the. The file Greek lexicon and grammar notes. I'm going to send you that file again tonight because I've added a, several links. I've added some YouTube links to it that may help you on some things. Okay, so I've added some stuff to it since I last sent it to you. There are 6,674 participles in the Greek New Testament. That's a bunch. And we have here the articular participle is always as an always used as an adjective. I don't want to go through and establish that right there. Right. Tense of the participles. So this is in that file. This is on page 359. It starts on 359. Because I keep adding to it, the headings move and they won't be necessarily be on the same page. All right. Summers tells us here something. And if you pick him up, the time of action is indicated relation to the action of the participle in the action of the main verb to the action of the main verb. So it relates its action to the main verb. Following indicates that relation. The aorist participle indicates action, which is antecedent to the action of the main verb. The present participle. Now this is Summers, an elementary grammar book. He's uh, not clear on it. Uh, right here, the heiress part of civil does not necessarily okay, this is fine. This is none. It's intermediate grammar. None is intermediate grammar says the heiress prophecy does not properly note an act in past time. But an act regarded as a simple event without regard to its progress or completion. That's the best explanation of it right there. So the heiress tense only indicates past time in the indicative with an indicative mood verb. And even that is just incidental, but it's it is past time with an in the indicative mood verb. But with a participle, it does not have time in it in context that's taken time. So it's a simple event. And the, and the per, present participle would be a continuous event, something going on continuously. As I read, it's difficult to conceive an accident of a simple event except in the past. The heiress participle generally denotes an accident which took place before the action of the main verb. But this past tense is by no means necessarily part of the meaning of the tense. Right? It's of antecedent action. So he tells you it can be antecedent. And anti is, of course, Latin for before. So it's antecedent, antecedent. And so it's most frequently used. Okay. There's part of several. It can be identical action. And, and identical with that of the main verb, but described in a different point of view. That's not. In this case, the action is obviously not antecedent in time to have the main verb. So none says it's not necessarily antecedent action. This is intermediate grammar. So you're going into it a little more fully. Right here is Dana and Mandy, an intermediate grammar book. Time relation of the context of particle naturally take the following three variations. Antecedent action relative to the main verb is or not expressed by the heiress or perfect. Nevertheless, the heiress, nevertheless, nevertheless, the heiress frequently expresses contemporaneous or subsequent action. 
contemporaneous is what's going on right now. Subsequent is future. OK. Any comments there? Right. So simultaneous action is ordinarily. Ordinarily, that means it's always. Right. Subsequent action is regularly expressed by the future. So he's, he's saying regularly, he's not, does, doesn't say always, that doesn't say always, doesn't say always here with this either. All right. All right. Goodwin says, and this is another grammar book, and their bibliography, uh, the reference to these grammar books is in the bibliography. The heiress part is simple in certain constructions, generally with the verb in heiress. Does not denote time past with absolute leading verb, but expresses the time coincident with that of the verb, the action of the verb, and the participle is, is practically one. I don't know if I've spent too much time on this, but here's some more. And so anyone that's using this can see these right here. Daniel Wallace. And then we have Bryce and DeBrenner, that's an advanced grammar book. Uh, Daniel Wallace is uh, a best grammar. And, and this is an old book, but it's long ago has been telling you this. The action known by the heiress participle may be past, present, or future. Right? And he said it can be an ascendant to coincident to subsequent to action of the principal verb. Right? That makes sense. Everyone see what I'm saying? They base their whole case on this right here and it falls apart. And one grammarian after another, Wiener, W I N E R, that's, that's German Wiener, I think, so that's pronounced. Aries participle in the course of an area sometimes, sometimes expressed simultaneous action. Sometimes an action which is pre has pre previously taken place. Principle or relates to something future as participle corresponds to Latin futurum exactum. So it can be present, it can be past, present, or future, depending upon context. Yeah. And here's some more notes. Pages 79 through 81, I don't really have time, I just cited. It. it tells the same thing. Any question? All right. Bon and Gideon, another advanced grammar book, <clears throat> says it can be subsequent action. All right, goes further. As far as several coincident action, coincident simultaneous, same thing. This is a molded full of gamma. gamma. And it can, we have further down here. And let me see who this is. This is Porter. So, again, I'll pause it just long enough. We're not going to go through all this. This is in that file that I have you. And uh, I wish I'd have had slide to follow these on. I just flashed them up there and buried him in it with one, one authority after another. And he builds his whole case on this argument. And it's a, it's a house of cards. Any question? All right. Is that, is that what he did in Acts 2 and verse 41? Yes. Okay. I yes. want to make sure because I was making a note. Yes, that's it. And yeah, I'll send you this file here. But he's, he's just, it's all wet on. This whole argument crumbles right here. It's all based on that one point. Well, he's got two errors in it. This is the first error. That's an overwhelming error. And the second error is he equates uh, receiving the word with dwelling of the word. And he's claiming that that's what we teach. And I don't teach that, and I never have taught it. Right. Right. Uh, and I believe that the, we, the Spirit dwells through the influence of the word of God. But the act of receiving the word has to be defined, okay? And he's, he's made a, a bad assumption there. Any questions? 
going to go back now. I know we spent time on this, but this is an argument that's been made. This goes back to uh, oh, an early writer that when the church split in the late 1800s, and there's a there's a man that wrote, and they like to quote him, and they've reprinted his book. Uh, I can't think of his name. I want it to be Roberts, but that's not right. Okay. I want to get out of this and go back to our material. Can you see it now? Yes. Yes, sir. We're back to yeah, this kept recording. All right, so now we're back here to it. And uh, it, and I'm, I'm getting that Roberts says what he says is correct. That's what I was always taught. So it can be simultaneous. The antecedent action before simultaneous or some grammarians believe future, he said. And he cites Acts 12 25. Right. So he says definitely the present part of it may be past, present, or future from the standpoint of the main verb. Again, so we don't latch on to the points that we had with respect to the verbs. A uh, verb, indicative mood verb. But the other tense of verbs, present tense, the uh, moods of verbs, not tenses, moods of verbs. Uh, we have the indicative mood. There's time inherent in the in the verbs. But the the time is an incidental thing. It's a small part of the verb. The main thrust of the verb is a kind, kind of accent, K-I-N-D. It's because I have an Oklahoma accent. I spelled it out for you. Make sure we didn't mix the word. Question. Yes. I'm still a little confused then. In, in what context do you use, for example, the present participle versus the aorist participle? Well, first of all, it's the kind of action. If you want to take the action as summary, as being summarized, you'd use the aorist. You'd want to indicate that it may be continuous or go ongoing. At, it could be an ongoing in the past, ongoing future or present. You'd use the present tense. Does that make sense? But gotcha. It's, it's a kind of action. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Genitive. To do this next week, but in Romans 8 27, uh, we I have a bunch of notes on it, and uh, this this objective genitive is a is a point here. Now, the genitive case with the noun implying an action may designate the object of action rather than the subject. But do not do not say I'm too small. Teachings of or about baptisms. Right. And this is teachings of baptisms. Okay. So that's the objective genitive. Right. And uh, it, this is a, a side point. This is not with participles, so keep that in mind. We have subjective and objective genitive. He's getting into them. All right. All right. So let's just skip down to the vocabulary, okay? We've been through the objective and subjective genitive before. He throws it in here. There is another construction. I think we may have it in another lesson. It's called the genitive absolute. And I'm going to write it on the screen up here for you so you kind of know what I'm talking about. Genitive 
absolute. Uh, this is a structure using a participle. Right? So it's a participle construction. And I think what we have is this is another way of expressing uh, this subject, making the subject do something. If I want to have a simple sentence, I'll take a finite verb and I'll have the subject of that finite verb being the nominative case, period. That's the rule. So <clears throat> I'm, I'm limited. limited. If I have a finite verb, I can only use the one doing the action of the verb and, and put him in the nominative case. Is that clear? So if it's if I'm going to have the subject and the nominative case, I've got to use a finite verb. Now, if I want a complex sentence, and I want to say John went to John hit the ball. And and it broke the the ball broke the window. Say the ball is the direct object. It got hit. It's in the accusative case. I can't have the ball doing something now because it's accused with a finite verb. So how am I going to do it? Remember, I'll, I'll give it to you if you don't give me one right answer right quick. It, you, it's easy to forget this. All you have to do is use an infinitive. Because now my direct object is going to do something. And I'll have an, I'm using an infinitive. The subject of an infinitive is in the accusative case. So now I've got a complex sentence. I've got the, the boy hitting the ball. John hit the ball. And the ball broke the window. So the ball broke the window. Now it's a more complicated sentence. But I, in Greek, I had to use, I had the had to use the accusative case direct object. I had to make it do something. I had to use an infinitive. Okay, does that make sense? What we're saying. So that's your rules. Now then, we have a genitive absolute, which we'll get, I guess, right here, vocabulary. And uh, the genitive absolute, I think it was in a later lesson. I'll, we'll, we'll see. I'll make sure that we get it covered, OK? I'll, I'll research it and be sure, but I think it's in a later lesson. Okay, any questions? It's the next lesson. <laughs> OK. OK, so we'll get to that later. That's another way of doing it. So we got three ways of having somebody in the sentence to do something. And whenever we come over to Romans 827, we'll have to look at it. It could have he could have used the gender of absolute to have it doing something, but he didn't. And he, he used, and so we'll go back to it. It's used to find that verb. Okay. Any questions? All right. Uh, we're gonna go another oh about another 15 or 15 minutes or so. About another five minutes or so. Let's do a vocabulary and then we'll get into the lesson next week. Acro, acrobustia. Acros is the top of something. And bustia is the uncircumcision. It's the, it's a covering on top of something. OK. And the foreskin is still there. Amartano, this is I sin. One of the words for sinning. This is to miss a mark. So some people sin out of ignorance. And it probably won't be Amartano because this one you 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 had a mark and you missed it. You knew you knew not to do it, but you did it anyhow. Okay, right? Anangalo, I report or I announce, and so Angelo, Angelo, and this is will be Anna Angelo, and so this is. Uh, it's a stronger form of announcing. Okay. Do luo. There is a form of a verb, do luo. They put an upsilon right here where my where my cursor is. That's another word for enslaving. Okay. All right. So there's a subtle difference in the meaning of those. And again, I believe I have in this file that we were looking at a moment ago. 
uh, I believe I have the distinction between them. Eleutheros, Theros, free. There's a free man and there's a freed man, and they're different. A free man has never been a slave. A freed man once was a slave, but has been freed. So when we see that, kaka oma, I boast. Koinos, common or unclean. I've never read anything common or unclean. Of course, these are adjectives here because we have the nominative case form of the masculine. And we change, drop the O's, put off, it becomes feminine, and drop the O's and drop on, we get neuter. This down here is also a O's, A, on. That's common and it's an adjective. And there's a noun. Oh, we have the nominative and the case, and then we have the genitive ending and the article. Okay. So, my I reckon. Right. Right. And of course, it's a verb. Here's a noun. It's a neuter case noun. Nominative form, the genitive ending and the article. Mountain. Right. All rose. Pros docano. Pros docao. I wait for something. Peri tome. And this is a compound word. Tome is, is to cut. And peri is around, to cut around to circumcise. Now, tonsillectome, you cut out the tonsils, see? And so tonsil and ek is out of, and tome is to cut. Appendectome, you cut out the appendix. That's me that is medical terminology. Pros kaleo, I said, I kaleo is to call and pros is to ward. So pros kaleo, I summon. Soon ago, I bring together. I go is to lead or bring, and soon is with. Hupako, I go, hupago. That's hupo and I go, I go is I lead also. And that's uh, uh, go away or, or lead away or go away. Any questions here? All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to we're going to start and let's do exercise 284 for next week. All right. Now I want to get back into the other file just one more time. And I guess we're into the. Can you see it? Subsequent use of Ash participle. Yes, sir. I saw it. I have here. Here is a, a link. Uh, I think it's a it's an article. So I put some articles in here. You can go off to okay. You can see them in color. Here's YouTube links. This is on the middle voice. It's a real interesting discussion of the, new, of the middle voice. Okay. So there's some YouTube links. You can find these yourself, but I just thought I'd add, let you see some of them. I've added them in here in your file. I'm going to add some more in and get some more, put them in the file so you can just click, come in here and just find them and go. Go, for, go to them and you can find some more yourself. And here's one. Here is the accents and how we pronounce words. All right. I've defined some words that he throws around the word in clinic and I've defined it for us with Mary Webster and also another Greek uh, source. OK, so I've got some other things in here that I've added in. But right here, ancient Greek accents, YouTube. 
and click right on it, go right into it. And uh, breathing marks, punctuation. So this is explains some of the stuff that we've had in the earlier part of the book. Okay. There's other stuff in here. I've got some other links in there. I just put them in, added it in. Just wanted you to know you can go through and find some more stuff. Any questions? Let me stop recording.